What's up Grapper fans? As y'all can see my 95 Ford Bronco is loaded way past what it should be and it's squatting a little bit and we can't have that. Now as cool as it would be to say that this trailer that's hooked up to it dragged home what I did bring home with the Bronco. I can't say that I did use the Dodge. My first gen Cummins uh, did a good job pulling this thing home. But flipping my trailer around in my tiny little cul-de-sac backyard is a no-go with the Dodge because the turning radius for it alone is the size of a school bus. But without delay, let me show you what I got. This is another Bronco for the channel. This is a 1992 uh, OBS Bronco. I keep looking for traffic, sorry about that. Um, it also has the 302 V8 just like mine. And I'll be going more in depth with it. But while I had the two Broncos here and until a car comes by, I wanted to show y'all that. I think it's a pretty cool setup, a Bronco pulling a Bronco. Now, this blue 92 right here is actually for my father-in-law um, when I decided to buy the blazer that just sold I was shopping around for a Bronco and I really couldn't find a good deal on one everybody wants a ton of money for them uh, but my father-in-law said if you can find one I'd like to have it if you're willing to fix it up for me I'll pay you for it and we can help each other out build it together so this one's definitely in a lot worse shape than mine was when I started, but it was also considerably cheaper. And with our budget, I think we're gonna be all right. Also, the transfer case uh, needed some work. It was removed, supposedly rebuilt, but not fully reinstalled. So you can see the drive shafts just chilling there, hanging from a zip tie. So right now it does not drive, uh, but it will start up. Um, I might even start it up for you here in a sec. I'm gonna have to unstrap it and everything anyway. Uh, power steering worked while we pulled it up on the trailer seem like brakes work things like that so it has a decent amount going for it um minimal rust let me show you the rust it has on it because that's uh another thing there the doors really not too bad no issues there really solid usually like these holes get clogged up and they get full of rust i don't know what's there's some screws sticking out there uh rockers usually rust pretty bad it does have some bubbling happening right here right where the, the top kind of meets um, but it hasn't really made a hole or anything yet so that should be salvageable these chrome pieces here on the fenders usually make that rust because that will hold water in uh, you can see it's got them front and rear but no issues there so he's obviously my wife's dad but he's really been there for me in the past few years uh, since i've known my wife anytime there's a big you know financial decision like buying a house um, even like the wedding everything he's always been there somebody that you can look up to and ask questions uh, to and he did 20 years in the Marine Corps so I definitely respect him and I'm very excited to be able to do this for him now my 95 over here it was just a hunting truck when I got it pretty scratched and banged up a little bit better shape than this one is in slapped a paint job lovely kit wheels and tires and a few other things on it and i'm really happy with it so that's kind of where we're going with this he wants it to be a little bit more old man style obviously because he's going to be riding around with his grandkids and uh you know my kids so i want to make sure it's nice and safe and cool for him but nothing too crazy so let's get this thing off the trailer i'm going to turn it back around back it into my backyard and we'll see what we got Got the ramp set up and while I have a little bit of light, I figure I might as well go ahead and show you. This thing should be a runner. The battery might be dead because I keep leaving the door open for it to air out because it's a little smelly in here. It's definitely uh, leaked some. I think the top mainly is what's leaking and it's full of black ants. I don't know if y'all can see that with the GoPro quality there, but black ants everywhere. So many black ants that they have like taken over the trailer and they crawled their way up the tongue of the trailer and all over the Dodge over there. So ants everywhere. Uh, the other thing with this, it runs, but it doesn't drive. I'm hoping to start it up just to use the power steering and the brakes so that I don't roll into my neighbor's yard or any of my classic trucks over here. So we're gonna fire up real quick. It's a little bit loud. There uh, is no exhaust on it. So let's see how this old five liter sounds.
as y'all may have heard with the grinding gears I forgot that the transmission doesn't work uh, it currently has hopefully just a transfer case issue where there's no fluid in the in, in the uh, transfer case or transmission so that's why it grinds when you try to put it in park uh, so I'm leaving it in neutral I'm leaving it right here that's the best I could do I'll pull it around with the four-wheeler or the Bronco if I need to but we got her off the trailer I'm gonna get my trailer parked before dark all right here she is after about six months of sitting here while I focus on some other things I do want to get this thing ready for the paint shop though so I just climbed under it started messing with it I want to show you what I've done uh, like I said it's been about six months sitting at my house since I bought it uh, I want to check the year okay there's no no plate here but uh judging by the moss and everything growing on this thing and the condition it was in when I bought it I think she's been sitting up for a while I just threw a new battery in it and um, I want to show you all real quick what I reconnected down here it wasn't too much. I'm hoping this was all that was left on it. I'll try to get y'all some light here. This flange right here that comes out of the transfer case and attaches to the drive shaft, which is weird. Usually it would just be a yoke that slides in, uh, but this one bolts on both sides, uh, being a funky little Bronco drive shaft that's only like a foot and a half long. Anyway, I got that hand tight back in there uh, and then tightened up the four bolts there so there's one main nut I did that and then this connector right here that's all I've done under here um, I checked the trans fluid which should be kind of connected to the transfer case I haven't actually checked to see how much if any fluids in here uh, and there is some trans fluid so I'm gonna start it up and see if it does anything now because as y'all remember uh, the last time I messed with this thing all it did was grind as soon as I tried to change gears so I want to show you all this in real time as it's getting dark and uh, go from there. But we'll see if she'll do anything and then I'll get back on it tomorrow hopefully and make some progress. So see the light comes on now. It's a new battery. I've got it in neutral and there's a freaking yellow fly in here. Make some noise. see if this thing will grind gears or if it'll try to move a little bit so I'm gonna set y'all down real quick and we'll see what happens fluids low because I'm having to give it some gas but look at that freaking thing she is ready can't even see through the windshield it's been so neglected but she is ready let's see if the lights work oh yeah we got lights I got the door open does this work oh yeah something just bit me I hope it comes back up I didn't think about that look at this First gear seems to work. Alright guys, it's the next day and I decided I want to pull this thing into the garage because the mosquitoes are pretty bad around sunset and that seems to be the only time I get to work on this thing. I do plan on having the shop built here before too long and that is when I will pick up progress on my 1967 6.7 power stroke swap. I know I've been putting it off, I'll explain it all more in detail later between work and uh, being a dad it has been tough to find time for this stuff because I got to focus on what's important. Uh, but getting this thing ready for my father-in-law is a uh, priority right now. So I'm putting it up on the list 
it's bumping my Bronco out of the garage for right now so I can focus on it uh, without coming out here and then running out of daylight and bringing lights and stuff out here. So I'm gonna keep tinkering with this thing and then we'll get it looking right and sitting right. You know, it's got some worn out old coal springs and uh, it's just it's just had a hard life. It's been beat up and left out in the rain and just sitting getting all mossy and everything. So we're gonna try to take care of it and get that thing looking at least as good as mine, maybe even a little better. The 92 is in the garage now and so are all the lizards that have decided to live on it and in it. So that's exciting, but I'm gonna try to get underneath it and figure out uh, what we got going on for transfer case, fluid level, and just do a little bit more troubleshooting before I try to drive it any farther. Back under the Bronco, you can see here's the rear drive shaft that's looking forward. Uh, this uh, fill here is where you're supposed to put the uh, transmission fluid into the transfer case. You can see that's where you drain it from. It's slightly lower, uh, not drastically though. And I just figured out that my adapter here from, uh, what is it, from a half to three eighths. Yeah, from one half to three eighths actually fits that pretty well. And it was pretty loose anyway. Um, I got it about ready to be hand threaded, but not quite. This big snap-on wrench just kind of fools you sometimes. You think it's loose enough. All right, so it's hand tight and feeling to see if we got anything in there. And she is dry as a bone, which is what I expected. I do see where it's kind of dripping here. I don't know if that's from the old fluid or if they did a terrible job resealing it in which case this will need to come back out of here and be resealed but I'm hoping uh, this is just residual uh, or I can at least tighten that one there uh, but I'm gonna get I think it's two quarts of uh, trans fluid this calls for so I'm gonna get some of that from the store and see if there's anything else I can knock out um, since I've been under here I've had a hard time dealing with the step because this thing sits so low the old saggy suspension uh, so I'm gonna try to get these old step bars off of here that because that's something real quick and easy I can do to make my life easier getting out from under here all the time Nothing to see here, I'm just trapped underneath this thing. Luckily it's not very heavy. There we go. All right guys, here's your tip for making your truck look cool while I'm under here. Uh, taking your steps off and getting bigger tires. That's all you gotta do. Uh, luckily, this thing's getting more attention than that because it still looks like a rust bucket, but uh, we're heading in the right direction. I love anytime I get a vehicle, whether it's brand new, uh, or 100 years old freaking make it look right and uh, this thing already looks a little bit better y'all can't tell in the garage but the ground clearance just looks so much better with this like six inches of tubing out from under here can't wait to see this thing finished up on some nice tires leveled out it's gonna be awesome back under the Bronco I picked up some cheap trans fluid uh, just to kind of see what I can do I'm planning on flushing this thing after I figure everything out get all the kinks worked out um, with that what brand of fluids do y'all recommend uh, for these things? Whether it's you know trans fluid or your oil. Uh, if y'all are brand loyal, I'd like to hear it. I just picked this up. Uh, the guy um, at Advance was pretty helpful, and he actually had a couple Broncos himself over the years, so he was pretty into my project here. But uh, I also had this pump thing from when I uh, filled up the transmission in my uh, 12 valve Cummins a while back. So I just pulled that out of a drawer. And I'm uh, gonna try and see if it'll work here. And basically, uh, with this fill here, I'm just gonna be pumping it until it tries to come out. Uh, and that should be the full service level there. So we'll see how this wants to go. Try not to make too much of a mess. There we go. Nice red fluid. Got that topped off, and I've already got some concerns about this thing. It is slowly leaking from the bottom here. Uh, you may be able to see this red gasket maker they smeared all over this thing. Uh, it was a pretty sloppy job and they definitely missed a spot here. So it's probably going to have to come out and 
get resealed uh, but before I get carried away I want to see if everything works right because if I take it apart reseal it and then it still doesn't work right I have to do it again so I'm gonna see if I can get everything working right uh, before I do anything drastic I'm hoping that having fluid in here is gonna make this thing shift right um, like I said I'm gonna check the trans fluid too I'm hoping it was just a low fluid situation um, because they said they had narrowed it down to the transfer case and got it fixed it just did not get all the way installed oh I forgot I didn't take that step all the way off let me do that too I let it warm up some and went through the gears checking the trans fluid uh, I just shut it down so y'all could hear me talk uh, here's the trans dipstick way back here and as you can see so it's just got a little bit on the end there this isn't focusing very well but uh, definitely well below recommended so I'm hoping that's my issue I'm gonna top it off and I'll keep y'all posted with this Bronco being so rough I wanted to give y'all a little uh, insight into its future how nice it could look the other Bronco that I own the 1995 uh, that I actually bought for my wife and she drove for a while uh, I ended up taking it over getting it painted putting mud graphs on it making it my own uh, getting her a forerunner but this Bronco is gonna be for her dad and it doesn't look like much right now and it's kind of a hard sell to tell you that's gonna be nice so I want to show y'all how nice I can get my Bronco looking with some new products I got from Zephyr I'm really excited to announce that I am now uh, promoting Zephyr polishes uh, this is a company I've been uh, working with on and off just kind of you know reaching out to them saying hey I like your products um, trying to you know get something going there a little relationship and I've been seeing Zephyr polishes at events like uh, Lone Star Throwdown in Conroe, Texas. I was in the Nitto booth a few years back there with my old King Ranch and talked to the owner. I've been in contact with them on and off and we got something going here. I'm trying out some of their new products and I want to show y'all uh, what I've got here. So a little backstory, Zephyr Polishes, they've really been in the big rig, you know, 18 wheeler industry. Uh, they make a lot of metal polishing stuff. So they are known for turning metal into mirrors. So you ever see a really shined up uh, Peterbilt or something going on the road, it's good possibility it's got some Zephyr polishes on it. Uh, they can take that aluminum and just make it look so good. And I used it on my forged wheels that I had on that King Ranch. They also make all kinds of other stuff like wax, um, tire shine, you know, basically window cleaner, all kinds of stuff. So let me show you some of the newer stuff and some of the older stuff. I'm not showing you everything because they have so many products. They have everything you could think of for your truck as well as stuff you never thought you could use uh, to bring some metal shining back to life. So uh, the newest things I'm excited about here are the Pro 60, which is good old car wash soap uh, that's something that they didn't really make for a while because it's not a specialty item you can get anywhere but um, I've actually been talking to them for a while and I'm sure other people have as well I like to be brand loyal when I find something I like that works I want to get everything I can from that company I mean this stuff is made in USA I can you know see the company at events they're really involved in the industry this was a company I wanted to support so now that they make car wash soap in addition to all the other stuff I'm going to use their stuff exclusively. They also make, like I said, tire shine, and uh, this is like really hard water spot remover, uh, basically a Windex type product. Uh, that stuff works really well on glass uh, as well as like the, the wheels. I'll show you all some stuff later on some of the other products I've used from them, uh, but really, really stoked on this ceramic coating. Now, everybody and their sister has ceramic coating now, every company, like I said, this is a company that I've been wanting to work with. I've reached out to them. This is not one of those things where they email every YouTube person out there and say, hey, will you promote our, our junk? This is a company I've been wanting to promote, and this is something I've been wanting to put on my Bronco to the point where I have not washed my Bronco in a year since it got painted waiting for this product. 
So uh, to explain that a little better, I rinse it off after I drive on the beach and everything, but I have not put a microfiber or a wash mitt or anything on it. So it is pretty filthy. You can only do so much with water pressure. Uh, so I plan on washing it one good time and then putting this stuff on. This should be a simple application as far as you spray it on, wipe it off with a microfiber, which they even have microfiber. So I got some microfibers here from them. So I'm hoping to use everything I can from them, get my Bronco looking really nice and show y'all what this thing could be uh, one day as we fix it up, we figure out what's wrong with it and get it back on the road for my father-in-law. So I hope uh, y'all don't mind a little plug here for Zephyr polishes, uh, but check them out. Really solid stuff. I'm working on a discount code. I may have that in the video for you uh, or maybe in a video to come. So I will keep you posted. Uh, this stuff is really solid. I'm excited to see the new stuff. Now let's get to washing my Bronco, see if we can't get it looking just right. Real quick guys, I am back from the future. Just wanted to, okay, that was really cheesy, but just wanted to uh, interrupt to give y'all that discount code. They did uh, actually give us 15% off to for me to give out to you guys. Uh, the code is Grappaholic22, uh, so like Grappaholics, but without the S, and 22 like the year 2022. Uh, so I'll go ahead and put that in the description or maybe up in the video. So y'all can see that, type that in, try that on the website, which is ZephyrPro40.com uh, uh, because that's their main polish that really put them on the map is their Pro 40. Uh, so with that, I hope you guys uh, pick up some stuff from them. They have all kinds of stuff. At least check out the website, see if the discount code's still working. Let me know in the comments. Let's get back to the video, get my other Bronco looking right. As I mentioned, I'm very excited to finally detail this thing after I got it painted. I've been really, really anticipating this uh, Zephyr product, the uh, ceramic coating that they have, and uh, also their, their wash soap. I didn't want to use anybody else's stuff on my truck. So in the meantime, I've just been getting rinsed off, and I want to show you all real quick in the sun what this paint looks like. It's still brand new paint, so it looks pretty good, but there's a ton of road grime and water spots and everything from not actually you know, washing it uh, physically with um, a mitt of soap or anything it's just been pressure washed off at the most so I'm gonna walk around it real quick give you all an idea how this thing looks and then we'll get to washing I'm not gonna bore you too much with it we'll just show you kind of a before and after see how this thing's looking you can really see the color here uh, now that the Sun's on it just right but you can see where you know little fingerprints here and there just kind of road grime some running streaks and everything from sitting out in the rain I do keep it in the garage usually, uh, but not always. And you know, water kind of comes down here and drips down and leaves some marks. Uh, so none of this has been, you know, wiped off yet. It's all just whatever's accumulated. Uh, tailgate, same deal. So yeah, that's a quick look at uh, how dirty this thing is. It's not not crazy, but uh, getting a ceramic coating on here is uh, something I'm excited to do to hopefully prevent this thing from getting that filthy. Uh, make it a little easier to keep it clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. And we'll see how it goes. Got the 95 parked over here in the shade. I've been waiting uh, till the evening when I get a lot of uh, shade back here. I would do it in my driveway, but it's always sunny there. Uh, so this is, is nice. At least I have this option because when you start washing something in the sun, uh, it dries really fast and my water uh, makes really bad water spots. Uh, it's really hard. So I'm gonna start rinsing this thing off. I'll probably show you the foam cannon and stuff. Nothing too crazy, but Real quick, wanted to give a shout out uh, to Crazy Casey's Customs YouTube channel. Uh, he's got that white Bronco that I used in the thumbnail. Uh, really cool uh, channel. He's got a couple little helpful tips on like spare tire uh, mount or like the two bumper he made. He's got like a Baja look thing, but his uh, Bronco is really sweet. It was a Sheriff's Department Bronco, I believe. It has like the spotlight on it. So check him out. Uh, but want to give him a shout out for using the thumbnail. That's a really cool picture of a mossy Bronco that really helped, uh, you know, kind of demonstrate what I'm talking about here. Uh, these old girls can be found for pretty cheap and they can clean up pretty nice. So this one was in a little bit better shape when I got it. So wasn't as cheap. I'm going to try to take care of it. I've gone ahead and pressure washed the whole thing. I just have a little 1600 PSI electric washer. Nothing too crazy. Just get the thing wet uh, quickly. I usually would do like one side at a time. Uh, but because I have it in full shade, I'm going to try to do it more quickly. Uh, let me know if y'all have any tips, though. I'm sure some of y'all uh, have your own opinions on washing stuff, you know, top to bottom, you know, using two buckets, whatever you guys like to do. I pretty much do everything with 
the pressure washer. I spray out my mitt in between uh, passes and everything. Uh, I try to keep it a quick process, but keep in mind uh, that I have hard water, so I gotta be quick. Don't let that water dry on there because it'll leave real white stains on it, uh, big wet water spots. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and spray it some more and get this foam cannon going. Uh, this Zephyr Sud stuff actually smells really nice. It kind of smells like a blue freezy pop. Um, I'm not sure if that's exactly what they're going for. It reminds me of something else. It reminds me of my childhood though. I really like it. Uh, I didn't put very much in here. I'm gonna see how well it foams up. I haven't adjusted the settings or anything yet. So I'm gonna get some more water on it, try to foam the whole thing, let it soak a good bit. Uh, probably do that a couple times, try to get the you know loose stuff off and then you know gently go over it uh, all foamed up with a mitt and try to clean it up. I also wanted to mention for some of you uh, long-term followers, Thank y'all for uh, being around, but the 1967 6.7 swap is still a go. It's just taken forever for me to get my shop built, and I do not want to try to pull this cab off of this truck and put it on this 2016 frame until I have my lift and I'm on concrete and everything. So it's just sitting here waiting. It's already rusty enough. It's not getting much worse. So that's still a go, uh, but want to take care of the Bronco for my father-in-law while I have a little bit of time because that's not something... I need to get too uh, in depth with, hopefully get it running, hopefully get it driving, and uh, we'll be able to get that thing cleaned up. Somebody's gonna paint it just like I had somebody paint this one. Uh, minimal uh, work for me in that aspect, so uh, I can save my time for piecing two trucks together. Stay tuned, because we got a lot of cool stuff happening. Also, what do y'all think of this color? Um, I've said on my Instagram what it is. I'd like y'all to try to guess what it is. I do plan on painting my 67 bump side the same color when it's done. So let me know what y'all think of it. First impressions of that foam cannon. Uh, really simple to use. You saw me just fiddle with it while it was going, and I think I got a solid foam out of it. And like I said, I didn't put that much product in it. Um, I did a very diluted amount just to kind of see how well it would work. And I'm pretty happy with that so far. You can see uh, the dirt is hopefully dripping off of this thing right now as everything comes down. So I'm gonna let it soak a little bit. Um, another thing, you know, I let this thing sit in the garage before it came out, so the paint itself wasn't too hot. I did have it sitting over there in the sun for y'all for a bit, but uh, really focusing on not letting any of this dry. So I'm not gonna take too long talking. I'm gonna get back to spraying this thing off, get it all soaked up again, and then I'll wipe, wipe it off uh, with a, a wash mitt. I got one on a stick, it's pretty convenient. And uh, just do that a couple times, get it all squeegee dry, and we'll get some ceramic coat on this thing. So basically just washed it, foamed it, rinsed it and repeated until I got it where I wanted and then I dried it with my leaf blower uh, to get all the water out of these crevices like in the mirror where the top uh, seal is just so it doesn't all drip down and then I used uh, a chamois just to kind of dry it off so got it pretty clean now. Um, I feel like I have done a decent job of keeping swirl marks out of this paint by not touching it uh, but I do still have some water spots that I'm gonna have to address before I seal this coating. But you can see it looks pretty darn clean. The reflection's pretty nice there. So I'm gonna try to look at it in the sun again uh, before I seal it. I do have some serious water spots still, uh, which I'll show you with this LED light, which really exaggerates everything. If I can get the right angle on it. Still pretty rough, which I was expecting because I didn't protect the paint in any way with wax or anything for a whole year. So I'm gonna try this uh, Zephyr uh, Eliminator, which is a uh, water spot remover. It does not say paint specifically on it. It says pretty much everything else you can put it on. Uh, so I'm gonna try a spot up here on the roof. So if it does um, not look right, 
won't be noticeable. So I'll let y'all know how that comes out and hopefully I can get rid of these water spots before I ceramic coat it. I know the lighting is not ideal, but here is a look uh, before. This is the driver's side of the hood, which I have not touched besides the wash. And then here is some eliminator on this side. And yeah, lighting looks terrible, but uh, I can see clearly uh, off camera that the water spots are coming up really nicely. Uh, it looks like super hazy over here. And I know it's not gonna be like this kind of lighting normally, but I'm trying to get this as clean as I can before I seal it up and then can't get the spots off. So uh, this is working, I'm gonna keep going and then uh, I'll probably throw some ceramic coat on there and show y'all how it looks in the daylight. Again, I apologize for the lighting, but I just wanna give y'all an update on the uh, Pro 50 Eliminator. Definitely seems to be uh, getting the water spots out. This lighting is just very unflattering, but it's still looking really, really sharp. I don't know if y'all can see this paint color, but pretty happy with it so far. Uh, but the sunlight's what's really gonna show all, so we'll see how it goes. All right guys, it's the next day. I stayed up till about 11 o'clock detailing this thing, and that Zephyr polish and stuff did the trick. The uh, eliminator got most of the water spots off, and then once I sealed it with the ceramic coating, you really can't see any of them out here in the sunlight. I'll try to give you all a good walk around real quick. This paint is looking nice. Super stoked how that came out. Y'all can probably just see my reflection in here, but at certain angles, the light hits it just right, and this paint is awesome. Very, very satisfied so far. We'll go a little bit more in depth after I get off the beach, but just wanted to show y'all here in this bright, hot sun that this thing looks perfect. Like, you can see the different angles here. The sun hitting it, this thing looks amazing. Super satisfied so far, first impressions. We'll see how it holds up. Let me know what y'all think. So, so shiny now, this thing looks awesome. Oh no, honey, the Honda. And they got it. We're back from the beach and I wanted to park it in the same spot I showed y'all this before, so you can kind of see. Uh, we also have some clouds coming and going. So this paint is pretty cool about looking black in the shade or when there's a cloud over, uh, but it does sparkle really cool like a root beer color um, in the sun. So I want to kind of show y'all how this color is popping with this new ceramic coat on here. Really stoked on it so far. Uh, we did obviously go to the beach, so it has some sand kind of on it. Uh, I'm also going to kind of rinse it off, but I'll show y'all in the video just hopefully this water is going to beat off. I haven't put any water on it since, uh, but my really hard water here through my hose is not ideal for keeping your stuff clean. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully it comes right off and isn't an issue. Um, while I'm waiting for the sun to pop out, let me know if y'all have any suggestions for, um, you know, softening the water out of my hose. I do have a water softener system for my house, but I don't think my hose is hooked up to it because the water that comes out of my hose will like leave the worst water spots immediately and our drinking water and everything seems to be fine. So let me know if y'all have any suggestions for a filter there um, or if you have any questions about this video. I'm really excited to have now two Broncos to work on. Uh, this one just needs a few final details and uh, y'all be sure to come back and see the other Zephyr products as I get the tire shined up and the trim and everything. You see the sun keeps peaking there. We got about, I think another 30 seconds and we'll have a nice sunny spot. All right, we've got some partial sun. You can see this color. Yeah, here's a little sand here from where I was driving on the beach, but there is really no water spots on this thing, which I'm amazed by because I had the gnarliest water spots from a year of just rinsing it off and letting it air dry. But man, this color, I can get it to hit just right. Uh, I haven't done the uh, eliminator on the windows really yet, so I need to get the water spots off there. So you can see like how bad the water spots were. Maybe you can, I don't know, the reflection's pretty intense, but um, just through my regular sunglasses, I can see the water spots are still on the glass, but I got nothing on this paint. I was really worried because the hood was just gross before and it is looking amazing now. I don't know how that light's hitting for y'all, but I'm super excited here. Uh, I think the sun's coming from this angle more, so we'll just kind of keep walking around, but super excited. I got a bunch of sand on the back bumper and everything, but 
this thing it just looks amazing and uh, really gives me hope for the other Bronco uh, that was kind of my goal for this video is to show y'all that uh, these Broncos while they're not the oldest you know they're not like the dent side Broncos or the original Broncos uh, this you know OBS body style from 92 to uh, 96 is still really cool and the value of them is actually going up a little bit uh, there's some more sun for the paint for y'all uh, they're starting to get pretty pricey but you can find good deals like the one I just bought uh, for my father-in-law I will let y'all know uh, in the next video what I paid for these things I want y'all to come back and check out how the Zephyr products are holding up and see if we can get that thing on the road so thank y'all so much for watching I really appreciate y'all I'm really excited about this Bronco this is kind of filling the void for me while I uh, wait to finish my dream truck project the 1967 6.7 power stroke this original old 95 with the 5 liter v8 is a lot of fun i feel cool driving on the beach i have a good time with it uh, and i'm excited to give my father-in-law that same experience so thank y'all so much i'd appreciate it if you like the video and subscribe and be sure to check out zephyr polishes because they got some awesome stuff and for the most part just kind of dripping right off of it. So what didn't drip off did kind of leave some spots and I just went over it with uh, this damp um, drying towel and it came off so easily. I was a little bit upset at first. I was like right after I stopped recording I was like, oh, I'm eating my words. It freaking left water spots, but it wiped off so much easier now with the ceramic coating. So definitely uh, gonna just rinse this thing off and then towel it off. Shouldn't have any water spot issues now. And I'll, I'll try to keep that uh, ceramic coating on here because it just looks amazing with it on here, like night and day. Uh, I forgot how good this paint could look. It's amazing now, super stoked.